I actually go from Splice and Post, and um, I'm here with part two of our Adobe SpeedGrade CS6 um, interface tutorial. All right, um, I will dive right into it. Um, in my last tutorial, and that is a part one, um, when I was talking about thumb thumbnails versus list, I made mention of the fact that a lot of DSLR cameras, or basically every DSLR camera in general, unless maybe it's hacked in a certain way, okay, I don't, really, I don't know much about that, but um, when you buy from the um, manufacturer, it doesn't come with time codes. So basically you can record your video, but the videos don't have no embedded time code. But um, as I told you guys, I said that um, usually when I receive DSLRs, okay, I'm able to um, generate time codes for each and every one of them um, before I send it out to editorial, okay? And just to show you guys um, that it is possible, I took the liberty to prep a couple of these clips with time codes. So these were the same clips you guys saw in the first, uh, the first uh, part for the tutorial. So if I go in my list view now, voila, we got time codes, okay? I'll, take, I'll try and take the time to um, see if I could make a separate tutorial on how to generate real numbers and time codes for your DSLR footage, all right? Now, another thing that I failed to mention is if you go in your thumbnail views, you could also see your time code if there is any available. But the only way you could do that is if you hover on top of your clip. So see what happens on the top. Now I see my time code there. Okay, uh, so that is um, another thing that I would like to let you guys know quickly before I move on. Now, on the left top um, part of um, our interface, we have a couple buttons here. The first one on the left looks like um, an open folder, and this is to load your sessions. Now, let me tell you what a session is. A session basically is like saving a project, okay? So, um, what you might know as a project in other um, applications is known as sessions here in Speedway. All right. So anytime that you save your project, um, the session is created. Okay. And you could put it anywhere on your drives. All right. And anytime you come back into the application, you could just pull it up and continue working from it. One thing I'll let you know though, Speedgrade has a built-in autosave. Okay. So even if you don't save your session, when you quit out of the application, it will automatically save your session. So when you reopen the application, you will find out that it's going to load whatever that you were doing before you left the application. There is a big gotcha though, okay? And the gotcha here is, if the application crashes on you when you're working, it will not autosave. Okay, so I will not recommend that you depend on the other save. All right, take at least 15 or 20 minutes during the time or the course of you working and always try and reach for the command S or control S um, keyboard shortcut and save your session. All right, and you are going to thank me someday for telling you this. Okay. So um, that is it. Another functionality of this session thing here is um, collaborative work, all right? Um, I have a buddy out in, uh, uh, in the United Kingdom, in London, all right? And he has a post-production um, uh, boutique over there. Now, let's just say he fin he's, he's working on a commercial or a feature, okay? And he does some stuff in speed grade, and he's like, oh, Ike, um, I've been able to achieve this and do this and you know I'm somewhere in the middle of it I'm I'm like 30 minutes into it will you want to just you know collaborate with me and finish the other 30 minutes and I'm like okay sure okay all he has to do is send me the same clips okay I have the same clips he was working on right here somewhere in my my sand or somewhere in my my, my external hard drive or whatever all right he sends me a copy of the last session that he saved and I could open that session right here okay open it up then I'm ready to go because I have the same clips so the sessions are gonna match okay so it is very good um, for collaborative work the next um, one here is um, saving your timeline okay so you could click that and you could save out your timeline that 
these ones are to redo and undo okay so you can undo or redo something if you want to reach out for it okay um, there is another great feature here that will save you a lot of time if you are working with um, different file formats okay um, so let's just say I have a director working and he's like listen I have this feature here that I did or this short film here but um, we filmed on different cameras okay we filmed on DSLR we filmed on RED we filmed on ARRI okay and he has all these bunch of files and I want to work with them okay now this is the way that you as a colorist okay could save your client time reach out for the desktops, stops and you also gonna thank me later that you did okay it's gonna help you work faster desktops stops are basically um, it's gonna basically help you to arrange your files okay the way you want to work because honestly if I have all those different file formats on my RAID 5 okay at any point in time if I'm working and I need my RAID files I gotta go and see where I put my RAIDs and reach out for it if I need my Aries okay I'll go look for it if I need my DSLR footage my MOVs I have to go look for it and that is killing a lot of time all right let me close out because I already created one here okay so for example let's just say I want to separate everything according to um, the different file formats all right all I do is go here on the, um, it's gonna say add a new page or add a new desktop okay I click on the plus all right and over here in this desktop all I need is nothing but my R3Ds or my red footages okay so I go to my red here um, I'll select it at um, the hard drive level and because I did that I'll come here and choose sequence from folder and subtree and I'm gonna filter it out because I have a whole bunch of files on there R3D click away from it now I have nothing but my red footages okay these are all red footage alright so at any point in time I could just bounce back so let's say I'm working and I'm grading uh, my MOVs alright doing my grade doing my grade and I'm like oh um, I need to reach out to my red footage okay all I gotta do is open a new um, this, the space that I open for the desktop and this right there okay I could do unlimited amounts of those so you could have um, your cinema DNG your R3Ds your MOVs everything is right there and trust me if your client is sitting over your shoulder and sees you doing this you saving him a lot of money and he's always gonna come back to you okay this is better than you always have to go in your raid or your sand and trying to look for footage try and make sure that everything is categorized all right and as I said you're gonna thank me later that you did okay <laughs> all right so the next now we're gonna talk about here is some um, creating the timelines as you can see I already have one I've created here so I could just basically go um, to the X here press that to delete it I'll confirm all right so um, there is really nothing here there are two ways that you could create a timeline all right um, the first is to hover on top of your clip you see this plus button here you click it and it brings your clips in the second way to do it is to drag and drop I will only advise um, not to use much of the drag and drop reason being unless you are trying to actually place the clip in a certain position you wouldn't want to do that because the difference between the drag and drop and using the plus is that when you use the plus function here to bring in your clip speed grade is very intelligent to know that regardless of where your playhead this playhead regardless of where it is it is always going to append your clip into onto the end of your sequence so if I want to bring in this clip and I press this it goes to the end of it if I press this to bring this in it appends it okay if I want to drag and drop you taking away that functionality so right now you basically trying to put it where you want to okay and anytime there's a red line is making you realize that um, wherever there's a red line you can actually um, release your mouse to create a new track okay I could decide to append it oops let me get rid of this my mouse is very sensitive all right so I could drag this here okay and if I want to append it you see how it turned red as soon as it turns red I could just let it go and append it okay but honestly man come on you wouldn't want to really do this okay so if you want to just create a linear timeline and just start working always just reach out to this all right I will show you guys some uh, some other functionalities here okay um, you have the benefit of a trim function here on your clips 
okay so if you take a look here these arrows here they allow you you could just click and hold it and you could drag to trim okay there is another button here and now this is used to move your clip around okay so I could just basically um, click and hold it and I could just start moving my clip okay and when anywhere that there's like a red line okay I could just let go and just put it right there another functionality of the same button here is to delete your track okay so uh, sorry delete um, the clip all right so um, I could just decide okay I don't want this clip all right I want to get rid of it okay all I do is I do the same thing click and hold it and I move it away from my timeline and as I move it away it turns to a red X so that means that I could just um, you know just let it go and it deletes um, that okay all right if you take a look here you have the same function here okay you could just use the same thing to delete the whole track so let's just say I do not only want to delete um, one clip I want to delete everything on this track okay you click and hold this you drag it on top or to the button away from the timeline let it go and it's gone okay I won't do that um, over here you could lock your tracks okay so let's just say you you have a whole bunch of tracks and you finish grading this you wouldn't want to have to do any change to it okay so you could just lock it okay you could monitor um, either monitor or disable monitoring of um, your um, track here um, if you have any embedded audio you could either monitor it or just toggle it off okay another um, hidden function that is here um, on your timeline is the ability to view your timeline in the storyboard mode so those of you editors or um, colorists who love the storyboard um, timeline okay you could just click on this film strip here and it's gonna give you a nice beautiful thumbnail or storyboard timeline alright um, in my next session I am going to uh, further on um, go down here and talk about what each and every one of these buttons here do and we're gonna try to dive in and um, begin to because I believe the more you know about the interface the easier it's gonna be for you to work okay now this way you're gonna work faster and you could be more creative because if you uh, if you don't know much about the interface you're gonna be always afraid to do certain things because you like oh I don't want to click something and something bad happens okay but once you have um, the, the knowledge of what everything is on here then you are liberty to do whatever that, all you gotta do is think of what you want to do and you know what button to reach for and to do it alright um, I'll just show you guys one quick thing before I wrap up here as you guys could see my playhead disappeared and this happens a lot in speed grade okay um, anytime this happens do not panic alright all you gotta do is click the home button on your keyboard and it will just reappear for you 